Hi there. This is an old Lionel KW transformer that I just picked up at a train show as pretty much junk. As you can see, it's in deplorable shape. It has no handles. It doesn't have the whistle lever. It doesn't have the bayonet lamp and it doesn't have the jewel on top. It doesn't have a power cord and it has looks like it's been neglected for a very long time. So I think it's a good idea to use this as a demonstration unit to show you where the wires are supposed to go on a KW so that when you want to do your own repairs you know what wires go where. So we're going to use the Lionel uh, schematic of the wiring for a KW as well as their pictorial guide to the to the wires. So let's start. I'm going to put on the screen right now the uh, the schematic, and you'll notice that you basically have eleven wires that you have to pay attention to, and when you compare the schematic to the pictorial, you'll see that. The wires have very specific functions that will enable you to diagnose problems with wiring uh, when, you, when you find something that's, that's wrong with the unit. For example, you want to take a look and see what your power cord looks like. You want to see uh, what service you're getting to your whistles. You want to see about the reversing units. And you want to see about your circuit breakers. So, all these different wires have different purposes. So let's take this case off, unsolder some of the wires, and go from there to identify each wire individually, where it starts and where it ends, so that you understand that. I'll be back to you as soon as I get the case off, and then I will also desolder some wires to be able to get the service platform off as well. We took apart this KW transformer, which was an absolute mess, and boy, oh boy, was it ever. And we did a lot of non-wiring work, but necessary repair work on it. I'll just show you what we've done. This is the base. We cleaned this up quite a bit. So you see the straps here? This indicates that this unit was built from 1957 onward. The original KW started in 1950, but in 1957, they uh, laminated the cores and they had to uh, fit them into a different size. So here we are with a probably very close to a 1957 uh, KW unit. Also, remember how disgusting looking the case was. Now, some Dawn di dishwasher soap and a toothbrush. And then uh, after it dries off a little bit of WD-40, shines it up beautifully. Great case, ready to rock and roll. And we have a new whistle handle lever that's all shined up as well. This was off a derelict unit as well. So if you have parts, get them out of your boneyard and, uh, and use them. Okay, what we also did, uh, this thing was disgusting. It really was, it was horrible. I put on a new rectifier disc, which is very easy. If you look in the previous um, videos, you'll see how easy it is to replace the rectifier disc. Also, put on new rollers. You can see the rollers here. Yeah, brand new rollers, the other rollers were completely shot. And a new power cord is, is on as well. Now listen, you don't have to buy a Lionel or an L power cord. Any good uh, replacement power cord from a hardware store will service the unit just fine. You, know, you don't have to go out of your way to get something that they're going to mark up the price. All right, so now I want you to show you the parts which you should have uh, in order to reassemble your unit. And just bear with me for one moment as I put all these parts together on my working surface. Okay, now we have Here's the four screws, the Phillips head screws, that uh, secure the cover to the frame. Alrighty, then 
These are the reversing knobs. You, you press down on, on, on these things for the reversing units. They have the little screws, the springs that come out, which are fine. These are the, the separating washers. And these are the pins that go in to push the spring, which is the, uh, the brass bar. They push that down for the reversing units. So that's all it for the reversing units. And this is the jewel. I'm gonna have to shine this up a little bit more. May wash it up because it's kind of pretty bad looking. This is for the uh, the light to show that you've got a short over uh, at the lamp. The lamp is does is not a power lamp. The lamp shows when you have a short circuit on this unit. So these are the parts that you should have. I keep them here in the little well of this chopping board as my surface. Okay, so now that we have all this stuff done, why don't we just take a look and see what wires we have here before we put the unit apart, a uh, unit together, and uh, where does everything go? Now you can see that the back plate is an absolute stinking mess. And so I'm gonna have to put some new binding posts and solder lugs back here and completely redo, I think, the entire back. You know, some of these, you know, the U bar is fine. Uh, the A here looks okay, but everything else is compromised. And so it might be a good idea for the life to give this thing another 70 years of life or so to uh, to replace them. I think I'll get them. And why don't we make that as a different video rather than delay the wiring video that we already have. So what do we have for uh, wires. There's about 11 wires that you have to pay attention to. And uh, the first one that you have to pay attention to is the power cord. The power cord connects. Let's find that connection here. Uh, right here. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to put the power cord through the slot in the back plate. You're going to give yourself uh, about 10 inches or so. And then you're going to tie a knot. A nice tight, tight knot, and uh, you can tighten it up right before you put the lid back on so that when somebody pulls on the power cord, the knot prevents the power cord from separating from its power connectors down here. And uh, it, like I said, you can use any re decent, you know, typical lamp power cord that's substantial enough. And uh, you can see that it's just on these two connectors here, and then when we put the unit together, this will slide back and we'll be in business. That's number one. Uh, the, the other power cords that we have, the, uh, the power cord that goes to, the cord that goes to the U connector on the back. See, we have U, U, A, B, C, D. The, the ground or the U is one piece. So it doesn't matter whether you do the U on this side or do the U on that side, whether or not your, your hot wire is down on the B or the A, that doesn't matter as long as the, the either U will function the same because it's, it is the same. And that's the number 10 wire that comes right here. This is the number 10, comes out of the core and just goes right up to the U to complete the circuit, all right? So this wire is done. It comes from the core to the U connector on the B side, and you're all set there. Okay, so what else do we have to look for? Well, let's take a look. What wire goes out from B? Here's B over here, and there's nothing connected to it. Well, the wire that comes from B is the eight wire. And the eight wire goes up to the reversing unit. You can, up here, underneath the, yeah, the reversing unit pushes down on a, uh, on the spring and disconnects the power connection between the, the spring up here and allows the E unit within the locomotive to go into new to cycle into neutral and then to cycle into the in the uh, opposite direction 
And all it does is interrupt power and then restore power when you let go of the button and the button pops up. So the number eight goes on the starboard side or on the B side of the unit, which is going to be this side. So you can see that it's already attached here. And so this, somebody already put a, some sort of a, a, a solder lug on here. This is gonna be connected eventually when I put the thing together down here on B, okay? The eight wire goes from the connector for the uh, directional, the directional unit, the reversing unit, to the B. Uh, and then the number three wire does the exact same thing on the other side. So the number three wire uh, connects from A, which is here. This is the number three wire, and that's gonna connect here when I solder everything together. But I'm gonna leave this off for now so I can maneuver things to get the core back into the frame uh, without screwing absolutely everything up. Look at all this stuff here. Anyhow, all right, so this is the, the, A, the A post only has this number three wire, which goes up to the reversing unit on the port side of the unit. Remember we said this is forward, this is aft, therefore the left side is port and the right side is starboard. Okay, it's, it's hard to figure out which is front and back on these things unless you use something that gets it all clear. Okay, anyhow, so what does that leave us with? Well, we have the D post. You see here, you have C and D. The D post only has one wire. And that wire is a, uh, comes out of the core and it's already connected. Let's show you where it comes from. Let's trace it. Here's the D wire. Let's trace it down so that it comes all the way from the core here. This on the, on the bottom of the secondary winding comes all the way underneath and goes here to D. All righty, this yellow wire, this yellow tubing, this one is a, is a great wire. It's a really fine, fine wire because it connects all the way from the core, as you can see, up to the whistle right here. So there's the power to the whistle. So whichever direction the whistle gets turned, this is the one that provides power to the whole whistle. It just goes through, the wire just goes through the slot. It's already bent here, but I'm gonna put it back. I'll put it through the slot and solder it in there, and then it'll be in place. So this is an, an obvious wire. It's a nice yellow tubing, and it, it just goes right here. So you know where it goes. Okay, that leaves us with the C post. And the C post is the most complicated of the, the different binding posts. And it's diff difficult because we're looking at the back of the, of the uh, back plate rather than the front of the back plate. It's hard to see things. But the C post is this one right here, which correlates to this thing back here, right? Okay, there's three wires that go to the C post. The two wire, the six wire, and the 11 wire. Okay, the, uh, the number two wire from the lamp is already on this unit connected to the number 11. So two and 11 are all provided for, and there's one more left over, and that is this wire, the number six wire from the uh, circuit breaker underneath and that fella comes up underneath and is already attached to C. So let's review again what we're doing with. The yellow wire is easy. That yellow tubing is going to connect all the way up. Uh, that's the number nine wire. And uh, the nine wire goes up to the whistle. That's gonna connect 
here for the whistle. All right, and that goes through that slot there. All right, then we have two units, two wires that go to the reversing units. This is the A post here. So this is the three wire. This is the B post down here. And so this wire should attach down to the B post. And that's, that's fairly simple for that. Then other than taking the, uh, the number seven wire to the D post, and that has already fallen off the machine here, we've got the, uh, the three wires that converge on C. And that wire is the, the lamp power wire, which is uh, number two. The wire from the uh, circuit breaker, which is number six. And the wire from the core here, which is number 11 on your, on your schematics. And then I think that covers everything except the only other wire is the number 10 wire that comes out of the core and connects to the U on the B, the, the U connector on the B side. And that's all there is to it, folks. So I'm gonna now put the thing together and solder it up and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I put the case back on. It looks like a million bucks. Most of this stuff is from scavenged parts, although there were some new parts put on. In the interior, we put in a, a new rollers and pins. We put in a new rectifier disc, which was easy to do. We put in a new power cord, which was important because nothing else happens otherwise. And uh, we rewired the entire unit. The back plate is a mess inside. So we're gonna do, as I said, another video on how to re, uh, repair and renew the back plate with uh, new lug nuts and uh, binding posts. That's a great opportunity for another video. But in the meantime, let's, these are all scavenged from other units from my boneyard. And uh, the A controller did not have the, uh, the, the, top, the top of the knob with the, the A letter on it, the orange knob on top. And I'll have to order that as an aftermarket piece. But let's take a look here and see what we're gonna be doing. Place the, uh, the probes in. We have our multimeter right here. And sure enough, we get 20 volts on the A side. Great. Let's take a look at the B side and see what happens on the B side. 20 volts on the B side, that's perfect. Now, let's take a look. If we do U and C, we get seven volts. It should be six, but we get seven, that's great. On C and D should be 14, we get 13 and change, and that's okay. Now, let's take a look at the whistle. The, uh, put the A side all the way up. There should be a five volt increase in the whistle on the A side. And sure enough, there it is on the A side. Let's take a look and see if it does the same thing on the B side. Yep, we got the compensating voltage coming back up there. You can see, there we are, another six volts or five and change. So that's perfect. So the voltage readings on these now are completely nominal. This is a completely restored and working unit. I don't trust the back plate, so we're gonna repair the black back plate. We're gonna get a, a little uh, knob for the, the A side, and this will be a, a regular functioning unit to be putting in service. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you understand now how relatively easy the wires are once you know that there's very few of them and where they go and what they do. So thanks so much for watching. Take care now, bye-bye.